Yeah, we're back up. Yep, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> Gary Murphy, Rick Corpola, Michael Berlin, William Messinger, Martin Vitek. No, no scheduled. No, no, nobody scheduled. No. All right, we'll start with uh, employees. Um, Bob Tomlinson is our shop superintendent. He has verbally given notice of retirement for September. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. He, he's he, when he gets all his paperwork back from retirement, he will give a written until then. Um, you know, we can't move forward or do anything, but he has barely. <laughs> <Fairly. laughs> yeah, no, he's he'll it'll be a huge asset. I mean, he 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 knows trucks, he knows equipment. Yeah, he can. So yeah, it's gonna to be tough to replace them. See what, see what happens, but he, he's been talking for a few years now that mm -hmm. it's going to be happening. So. so other than that, no no employee changes that we know of. Um, talk a little bit about our work schedule. Uh, we've been doing some rut paving on 77 east of Mellon. That, that section is really coming apart. We've been grinding it out and, and doing some rut paving. It's working out well so far. Um, we're up at Denemy Creek today doing some riprap up on US 2, right, right in Odena. Uh, as you see, if you come in, we've done some paving around the shop here. Um, Highway GG is going to be used as a detour route this summer for the Highway 13 construction project. Um, they came in and they, they did some patches over a few of the worst spots of it. The state paid for the patches. There's a lot of bad <laughs> spots. There's a lot more that need it, but this is what they budgeted to, to do for now. So um, <laughs> I tried, I did, I really did. Um, we are going to be starting track sealing plan to next week. Um, start on a couple county roads, and then we have a lot on Highway 13 and some on the Highway 77. Um, we're also hoping to start culverts next week. We have one one culvert to change out on um, and out of uh, Glidden. There, we changed a lot, most of them through that section that's getting paved this year. Last year. We did find one more this spring that we feel we better change before the new asphalt gets there. So we'll be going to there first and then from there uh, heading to GG South Lake Planway for culverts and, and dig some rocks out of the highway. So that's basically where we're at for a work schedule. Yes. Post after the 4th of July. I have not got a Firm date on that, but yeah, they they are working down there now. I don't know if anybody's been through there. They're they're digging culverts in. They're doing some work on the sides. Sure. 
Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And it's, it's it's not the greatest road. I mean, it's 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 hills and corners, but then the road is starting to fall apart on us also. So. Uh, they're saying they're having a hard time hearing us. Do I have to speak up a little bit? Oh, I have to unmute them. Okay, you have to change the mic. You're using the mic on your computer. So on the lower right left hand corner where it says your microphone. Yeah. You got to be using the microphone that's on the table. You're only using the one from the computer. So we can hear everything you say, but we can't hear any of the committee. Yeah, it was. Yeah. No, see, you're still using the computer mic because I can hear you really, really clear, but you can't hear anybody else. That might have worked. Okay. Okay, try again. Is it now? Can you hear us, Clark? Now you're now you're cooking with gas right there. Good. We won't see okay. that. Okay. silence. <laughs> Good. Thank you, Clark. Sorry about that. Yeah. That's all right. The other the other thing before you go any further, um, I am trying to get all the committees. We have a YouTube channel. I'm the administrator for those of you on the line. I'm the administrator for the county. I am trying to get all of the committees to record their meetings. And then we po post them on our YouTube channel. And so Amber, on your um, on your lower towards the middle section, it says record. Yep, we are recording it actually already. You are recording it. Yep. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. Carry on. Yes. How, how much uh, summer help did we land up having? We ended up with six. Well, that's what we were shooting for, and we did find them. We did find the six? Yes. I had another question. Coming coming here today, I see there's a dead deer lane on the side of the road. Yes. How often do they get picked up, or what? what's the policy as far as picking up dead animals? So so that changed within the last six months. Uh, the DNR used to contract us, the highway department, to pick them up. They put it out for public bid and a private contractor did get it for like, what was it, $15 a deer or something? Yeah, I mean, it was, we, we bid what we had, we had been getting 350 a month for multiple years and that's the price we put in and somebody came in and, and really lowballed it. So, so how, how often do they come? They are supposed to have three days to pick that up from when they're notified. So the sheriff's department notifies them when there's a deer on the road. So we're, we're, we're kind of in contact with dispatch. And well, this isn't one. Of, if this isn't on the road, it's laying off to the side. Sure. Somebody must have hauled it off. That was hit on this side here and you dragged it over. <laughs> You've seen it too. Yeah, I saw it. <laughs> there's a whole bunch of plastic and glass. It yeah. should be 80, 90 degrees, three days in a long time. It is, yeah. City. Yep. But, okay. Thank you. <laughs> Any other just, questions? Just a, just a question. When you do crack ceiling, the new pavement from the village of Butternut out to Schroyer Road, mm -hmm. there's a couple of spots on that new pavement that she split across. Okay. We, we will plan to go through there, yes. We, we like it to. I really feel it's important on new pavements to crack seal them every year. Like the new stuff on C here, it's what, two or three years old now. We've been doing it every year. It's one crack, sometimes every quarter mile. But the more water that you keep out of getting into that road base, the longer it's going to last. So right. um, I, I do feel strongly about it, and we will be hitting the new pavements often. Did we buy that crack sealer? We did. Okay. Yes, that was on the, the capital improvements last year. We, we purchased the crack sealer. Construction. Okay. Construction. So just to touch, not, nothing's changed. Um, County Road N, approximately five miles on the east end will be paved. Uh, I, I believe sometime in July. I haven't got a firm date from then yet, but it will be before September 1st. 
is supposed to be done by. So, um, and then we are going to be doing multiple culverts on GG, North and South GG. Um, I do have a little bit of farther down in here, we'll have some discussion on County Road H and ask you guys what you think on an issue out there. So, um, but that's, that's where we're at for right now. Any questions on those reports? Otherwise, we'll move to item six. Reminder of the summer road school. So just a reminder, we have road school is on uh, August, what was it? 10, 10, 11, and 12. If anybody is interested in signing up to attend that, we need to get signed up. I will the, not the end of the month. Yeah. So, all right. Okay. Well, I was wrong, but I don't think they'd let you get a golf ball when it came. <laughs> you could try. <laughs> Can't drive too far that way. You never know. But, uh, okay. Marty, are you thinking of so we're, we're thinking about it. That's as far as Okay, just now. let Amber or Matt know. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mike? Mike? Mm -hmm. No? Okay. Yeah, so so you <laughs> July 1st. Um, <laughs> in August. Mm -hmm. it's it's in the middle of October. Yeah. 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 Okay. So then we have a presentation by Rob Lee, Midwest Environmental Advocate, on the utility road work. So this was this was come up. Um, some of you might know Jan Penn requested and she had been talking to Marty, I believe, about having Rob Rob Lee, if I get this right, he's an attorney with Midwest Environmental Advocates, and he's gonna give a short presentation on utility road ordinances. So he will do it via Zoom platform. So Rob, take it away. Thank you, good morning. And can you hear me and see my screen? Well, thanks for having me today. Uh, as indicated, uh, my name is Rob Lee and I'm a staff attorney with Midwest Environmental Advocates uh, based in Madison. And uh, I've been scheduled, uh, as indicated today, to discuss the potential for a utilities uh, road ordinance in Ashland County. And my understanding is that the idea may be to enact an ordinance that regulates all utilities broadly. Uh, but of course, the most immediate concern uh, is Enbridge's proposed new segment of, you know, Line 5 running through uh, northern Wisconsin. And I, I just want to point out my purpose here today is not to convince you whether the new Line 5 segment is a good idea, but just rather to, to point out how roads under your jurisdiction may be impacted by the construction and maintenance of that pipeline and, and to give you some ideas about how to prevent uh, those impacts or to at least be compensated uh, for those impacts. Whether that's through a utilities road ordinance or otherwise. Um, and so you know, the, the, the upshot or the point is that you know, any externalities imposed on roads from the pipeline construction and maintenance really should be borne by the pipeline company, not the county and not, uh, not taxpayers. Uh, and so uh, with that said, before I get started, I do have to give a, a quick uh, disclaimer uh, per my ethical duties and just point out that this presentation is just for informational purposes, should not be taken as legal advice. Um, I will do my best to answer questions at the end, um, uh, but I will decline to kind of answer any uh, questions that allow, uh, ask me to apply the law to a specific fact scenario. Uh, I often work with local governments and provide legal advice on occasion, um, but that requires formally entering into that relationship with a contract and the whole nine yards. Um, I also want to flag that I am by no means an expert in highway law. Uh, some of you may very well know uh, more about specific aspects of it than I do. Uh, I am obviously an environmental attorney by trade um, and have really just researched this to uh, Wisconsin highway law to the extent that it intersects with my work. And so flagging that the following is just based on my best judgment understanding. Um, it is by no means the end all be all. 
and any actions that you take, um, whether it's the highway uh, committee or commissioner um, or the county board should uh, be done in consultation with an attorney retained for that purpose. You know, you don't want to get embroiled in any uh, costly litigation um, and you don't want to do anything that might threaten your state or federal highway funding. And so um, to the extent that you're considering a utilities road and ordinance or just taking action that you're authorized to do yourself, uh, I very much encourage you to take that in consult, uh, take those action in consultation with an attorney um, that can analyze the specific action you're contemplating uh, in view of the applicable law. And uh, so I just want to provide you a quick roadmap. Um, I will try to move this, through this as quickly as possible. I timed it out um, even with the introduction at about 20 minutes. And so um, I, I do appreciate your time. Uh, uh, so the first thing is just going to provide an overview um, of the proposed new line five segment. Uh, I will discuss the sources of that construction and maintenance, how, uh, how those sources can impact roads and discuss options for regulation including weight limits, road use agreements, utility right-of-way permitting, and then um, really address this overall issue. You know, uh, is a utilities road ordinance a good idea? Uh, and even if so, is it absolutely necessary? Uh, and just to preview uh, that answer, I, I do hope by the end of this presentation that while having that ordinance can be extremely useful for a variety of reasons, uh, and is definitely something worth consideration and something that, uh, you know, the highway department should work with the, the county on if that's what they want to do. It is by no means, ab you know, absolutely necessary. The highway department, including, you know, this committee uh, and the commissioner have a great deal of authority that already exists under statutory law to accomplish a lot of the objectives that, that might be accomplished in a utilities road ordinance. Uh, the difference, I think, is that uh, a lot of times the actions that you might take will be in response to a specific action, the utilities road ordinance may will apply, likely apply much more broadly. Um, and so I do uh, just want to make uh, that clear at the start. Uh, very quickly going to uh, go through through this. I'm sure you're well aware of, of line five and, and what it does. I think uh, the main uh, point here is um, that it's replacing 20 miles with over 40 miles. And whereas only eight of those miles, uh, of those original 20 miles were in Ashland and Iron Counties, uh, and by that I mean not on the reservation, uh, uh, now all 40 or you know, over 40 miles will be in Ashland County uh, and Iron Counties, which uh, just is going to require more, uh, more work and more use of, uh, of your roads and, and thereby uh, exacerbate any uh, potential impacts. Um, I just kind of discuss where it starts and where it will end here. Um, you can see here on the map um, kind of broadly. You may have even seen this before. Uh, and if you want to look at the exact route, like really get in and look at the, all the road crossings, everything like that, um, I've provided a link here. Um, and, uh, and here are the names of the documents once you go to that link that you can download. This is a link to the PSC docket um, that includes a lot of information on this. So uh, as I indicated, just discuss the sources of road impacts. There's two major sources. Um, I think the, the biggest and the most obvious is the wear and tear on the roads due to the transportation of heavy construction equipment and construction materials to, uh, to job sites for both construction and then maintenance after the pipeline itself is built. Um, and then uh, likely uh, smaller impacts, but still important are uh, the road crossings, uh, which, uh, can be accomplished by directional boring or by open cut construction. Um, uh, moving, moving along here, we'll just go uh, through this really quickly and just pointing out the different types of heavy construction equipment that are required, um, you know, both for uh, just constructing the, the line initially, right? You need all sorts of things and to get them to the site, um, uh, which you know, it not only includes the, the heavy machinery, but then they're gonna have to haul out debris, stumps and dump trucks and things like that. And so it very much is, uh, it will have, and it you know, can have an immediate, intense, focused impact on your roads over a short period of time. Um, not just from the weight, but from the frequency of travel as well. Uh, and then of course, pipeline maintenance as well requires bringing in a lot of those same heavy uh, construction uh, equipment 
uh, how pipeline, pipeline maintenance usually works is they send this little internal inspection tool uh, through the pipeline. It sends data back. Um, and whenever those tools report an anomaly, uh, the Federal Pipeline Safety Act, which we will discuss uh, more in depth here lately, but that usually requires a visual inspection, which is accomplished through an integrity dig. That means bringing that big heavy equipment back out, excavating the pipe, uh, and visually inspecting it and potentially uh, repairing it, then backfilling it back in. So it's not just they build the pipe and they're done. They very much will uh, likely continue to use uh, your roads with this heavy equipment needing access to that and, and will do so increasingly as the pipeline ages. Um, so specific to this project, there will be 35 road crossings. And this is just, you know, the pipeline going underneath the road. Um, and is not the you know traveling with the heavy equipment on the road uh, in both uh, 35 in both Ashland and Iron uh, counties as I uh, mentioned this is accomplished usually in two ways Enbridge typically open cuts uh, gravel and dirt roads uh, and and typically and I want to say typically does directional boring under paved roads unless your right-of-way permitting uh, will allow open cut construction. And of course that would require, you know, ripping up the paved road, uh, temporary blocking it off, uh, using detours until they can get that road put back together. Uh, oftentimes that can be done quickly, but if it's a, uh, you know, if it's a major highway, it, it can uh, take several days. Um, I think uh, they average anywhere from two days to two weeks. So, um, I've listed here for you all the actual road crossings um, in Ashland County. Uh, the, I just want to point out that the mile posts are not the mile markers on the roads. They are the mile markers of the pipeline. So just with that in mind, and I threw in Iron County uh, while I was at it here. So, um, you know, obviously some of these are state trunk highway roads, um, some of which may or may not be uh, your responsibility to maintain. Uh, and I, of course, will leave it um, to you what, you know, which actual roads are under your jurisdiction. So uh, as I pointed out there, you know, there's a lot of, there are quite a few actions that the committee or the commissioner, um, it sort of depends on how the commissioner is appointed or elected and who gets to exercise what authority in what instance. But, but, but regardless of that, there is quite a bit of actions that you can take without passing an order. An ordinance may very well accomplish a lot of the same purposes, but isn't absolutely necessary. And so you can impose more stringent conditions on overweight permitting, uh, reclassify or designate highways to class B, uh, impose special or seasonal weight limitations, which, which you actually already do um, when it comes to the spring thaw, for example. Um, you can prohibit the use of any county roads without a road use agreement. And of course, um, you can permit uh, any construction in you, the uh, highway right of way. Uh, a lot of this may be a review for you. And so just we'll, we'll quickly go through this. There's a lot of text on this screen. Um, but basically the county highway commissioners or committee can designate any class A highway to a class B highway, which reduces weight limits um, by 40%. Uh, and I do wanna point out that courts have held that, uh, that De that designation does not have to be on uh, the condition of the road, but can just be generally to promote like the public welfare. In one case, uh, it held that they could impose this because it would reduce the noise on nearby residences. So in this particular uh, instance, uh, it, it doesn't have to be based on the condition for road, pointing out it doesn't apply to the state trunk highway system, but here, uh, there are exemptions uh, already for the class B designations. And I wanna, I underlined here public utility vehicles because in recognition of this idea that any utilities ordinance may be uh, kind of broad for all utilities, um, that it's gonna work different, differently depending on the utility. So the county board could very well, and I've seen county boards do this, go in and say all roads in the county are class B highways. Um, all roads under their jurisdiction, that is. Um, but this would, they would still, these vehicles would still be exempt from that. The, the issue here is how public utility uh, vehicles are defined. And uh, it is not clear, and I think there's a good argument that oil pipelines, while utilities, don't qualify as public utilities under that definition. Um, of course, that, that is open to debate. Um, but I think what clearly does apply are things like 
high voltage transmission lines or, or water, uh, water pipes, uh, sewer lines, things like that. And so, but do want to flag that for you. That'll come up in another context um, and you can you know, read uh, these, other, uh, these other exemptions to that. And of course, you can have overweight permitting, even if you don't class a, a designate it as a class B highway, if it's over class A um, or class B, if so designated, um, requires uh, an overweight permit for roads under your jurisdiction. Uh, what will happen is, you know, DOT has uh, an application form uh, that uh, it, it, it is made that the applicant will send actually to the highway department. DOT sets a general permit um, conditions, but in issuing those permits, you are very much authorized to impose additional reasonable conditions uh, based on local conditions, based on the roads that want to be traveled, all, all of those things. And you can very much do so in the context of permitting. Whereas, you know, a utilities road ordinance may set forth general requirements that are in addition um, to the Department of Transportation's requirements. Uh, in addition, you can require permit, permit fees, payment of investigation costs, uh, imposed bonding or insurance requirements. Um, not going to talk about um, the, the first two, A and B here, because this is something that the county already does. Again, you did it with your spring thaw seasonal uh, weight limits from early March to early May. Uh, we just want to point out that um, exercising the authority here under A and B does have to be due to the condition of the road, the weakness of the roadbed. Um, but it's still, you know, Whereas your spring thaw is a seasonal weight limitation, there is the option to do a special weight limitation. It just, uh, you know, I would actually leave it to your expertise to determine, you know, what those conditions might be and necessitating that. But there is, uh, oh, for those first two, again, uh, there, uh, there are some exemptions. First of all, you can carve out your own exemption. So if there's a particular industry that's important to your county that you think would be adversely impacted disproportionately by um, you know, a seasonal or special weight um, limitation, you can carve out an exception for that. But again, there's a list of vehicles that must be um, exempted. And again, we see our friend, the public utility vehicles um, may or may not apply to oil pipelines, likely does apply to most other utilities. Uh, the other option here is uh, under 349.16c that allows the commissioners or committees to order the suspension of any vehicle if in its judgment that vehicle is likely to or is causing or is likely to cause injury to county highways. And uh, exemptions to that or exceptions to that, one is DOT, um, you can't prohibit them from repairing their own roads, although they are responsible for any damage. And the other is a big one that I wanna talk about. And that is when the vehicle is being operated pursuant to a contract, which provides that the county will be reimbursed for any damage done. And these are your road use agreements. Um, and so I do wanna point out that here, there is no requirement that the weight limit be exceeded um, for the county commissioner or committee to require uh, someone like an Enbridge, um, other utility to enter into a road use agreement. Um, and uh, so it doesn't just have to be a weight, as I uh, alluded to earlier, it can also be due to, you know, just kind of elevated uh, weights above normal traffic in conjunction with the frequency. So whether during construction or later on for integrity digs. And um, so this is essentially just a contract that, uh, that the, the commission, the committee, maybe the, the, the county more broadly would enter into with a company. Um, that give it the right to use its roads, but um, get concessions in return. Um, and I've listed uh, some of the conditions that you could that you could include in a road use agreement: right to inspect roads uh, before and after use, right to establish causation, require vehicles to be weighed before use, uh, require the pipe, pipeline company to indemnify the county for all damages and costs to repair those damages, and even require the pipeline company to post a bond or show proof of insurance. Now, these road use uh, agreements have been litigated in Wisconsin one time. And, th and this is this case back in 2013 in the Western District of Wisconsin, which Ashland County very much is in. Um, and the town of Lima, this is in South Central Wisconsin along the other pipeline corridor. Um, but uh, the town of Lima was prohibiting Enbridge from uh, act using town roads without entering into uh, a road use agreement. And they were in negotiations, but while that was uh, going on, Enbridge sued them. And they argued um, that prohibiting the use of town roads was preempted under the Federal Pipeline Safety Act, 
not only because that Pipeline Safety Act uh, includes an express preemption clause prohibiting any state or local government from uh, promulgating safety standards, um, but also because by preventing them from uh, accessing their pipeline and conducting integrity digs, Enbridge argued that uh, it would conflict with uh, Congress's purpose. The court rejected both of those arguments and said that road use agreements are not safety standards uh, and therefore not prohibited under federal law and that the conditions or the, 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 uh, the conditions in the road use agreement that they were trying to get Enbridge to agree to, uh, including uh, payments, you know, road use fees, were not objectively unreasonable. Um, and, you know, just because Enbridge didn't want to pay that much doesn't mean that they're preempted under federal law. And so there could be certain road use agreements that are so unreasonable, so as to prevent them in any instance from accessing their pipeline, then perhaps that would be preempted. But um, the point here is that not all road use agreements are preempted when applied to an oil pipeline. Uh, anyway, I have the citation there. Um, if uh, you know any subsequent attorney that you work with wants to look that up and review that, call the town of Lima, get a copy of those re uh, road use agreements, uh, whatever. Okay, so moving on here to utility uh, right-of-way permitting, there's actually quite a few statutes that pro provide local governments with the authority um, to require uh, utility uh, right-of-way permitting. And of course, the Wisconsin County's Highways Association has developed a comprehensive utility accommodation policy that many counties uh, have just adopted outright or build off of. Um, and, uh, but the point is, so under this uh, specific statute, 86072A, the county board or uh, the highway committee or commissioner can adopt rules and regulations for construction, um, require the highway to be restored to its former condition, and uh, require the permittee to be liable for all damages. Um, I, I underlined here, or for the safety of the public, um, again, if that were the express intent, purpose, outcome of the law, right, to impose a safety standard that likely would be preempted by the Federal Pipeline Safety Act, but ensuring the integrity of your roads is not. And so um, you can adopt, adopt additional rules, regulations, and conditions necessary for the preservation of the highway. Now, I did notice on your website that you actually have a utility right away uh, a permit on there. Um, you know, it does reference the Ashland County Utility Accommodation Policy, uh, but I'll just point out that I, I could not find that on your website, either on your forms and policies page or, um, or through the search function. And, uh, and so I'm not uh, sure if, you know, Ashland County is one of the, the counties that have just adopted, adopted the Wisconsin County's Highway uh, Utility Accommodation Policy or has uh, built, uh, built upon it, changed it in some way. Um, the, the permit is a, just a, basically the form permit that is included in their UAP and uh, it of course represent, uh, references the indemnification policy in the UAP itself. But the point is, is that's just a general policy and lo local governments, counties included, can very much uh, enact more stringent uh, right-of-way permitting requirements and I've listed a few things that could be done to the extent you haven't done them already. You know, um, establish a fee schedule so you can pay for the administration of this uh, of these permittings. Um, require certain debts for different types of utilities to be buried. Um, I, I think the, the WCHA UAP requires just a minimum of something like two feet. Um, and of course, it's required to be much deeper under federal law for, for oil pipelines. You can prohibit open cut construction or or uh, express a preference for directional boring. You prohibit blasting in right-of-ways. Enbridge has very much indicated that it may need to blast in certain areas, uh, and that could be problematic in a highway right-of-way. Um, there's some other conditions here, you know, filing requirements, uh, permits and maintenance uh, for work, uh, establish your own road closure policy, and all of those things. So here's the ultimate question, you know, do you need a utilities road ordinance? Uh, the answer is no, it is not absolutely necessary. This, the group I'm speaking to like directly right now has ample authority to do very 
uh, most, uh, if not all of the things that a utilities road ordinance uh, would accomplish. You know, however, um, that doesn't mean that this body is always going to be comprised of the same people, doesn't mean you're always going to have the same highway commissioner, and you do have significant discretion. And so, you know, a, a county uh, ordinance could, uh, you know, establish minimum, you know, regulations or require that when certain facts are present that you exercise your discretion in a certain way. So that, um, you know, later on, you know, a subsequent commissioner or, you know, different committee doesn't just kind of abdicate its duty to ensure the integrity of its roads um, from this machinery. And so, um, and, and again, the other, uh, advantage of that is that it can apply much more broadly, whereas it's, it's a lot harder for you to work on a kind of a case-by-case -case basis, um, which you still may do so, um, but it would be a lot easier if there's a baseline to work from. And so uh, the examples of what that ordinance may contain are, is basically a lot of the things we've already discussed. I've, I've seen counties designate all county roads under their jurisdiction as Class B highways impose overweight permitting requirements, you know, establish minimum or required terms for road use agreements, codify those utility right-of-way permitting requirements, and instead of just leaving it to you to adopt, um, you know, those policies. Um, and I'm sure that you will like this one, um, uh, which is increased funding, you know, to administ uh, administer, maybe even enforce those laws. The only other um, prominent thing that I've seen is larger counties enacting um, ordinances for controlled access highways. For example, here in Dane County, there in, in chapter 79 of the ordinances, there is a comprehensive um, controlled access uh, ordinance. Uh, but that, you know, designating highways as such requires a lot of additional work on your end, and that could be cost prohibitive. So I don't really have that listed here. Um, and I just want to reemphasize this again. In any action that you take, whether it's you or the county board in, in, in passing an ordinance uh, or you just working uh, kind of unilaterally, um, that uh, there is this uh, overarching prohibition from the Federal Pipeline Safety Act. Cannot en enact safety standards for oil pipelines. Um, and so just about ready to take questions if there are any, um, but I just will say, to the extent that the county uh, considers adopting this ordinance, I, I, I think, of course, your committee and highway department has that sort of expertise that, um, that the county would need um, you know, to develop a good ordinance. And uh, I would encourage you know, the, the county to at least consider it and, and for you to participate in those discussions to the extent that they do. So um, I appreciate your time. And yeah, again, happy to answer any questions. Any questions? The only thing, Rob, is uh, whatever we do, we would enforce it on county roads, but the townships who are involved, uh, they would have to do something on their own, correct? Well, um, I, I will leave whatever roads are under your jurisdiction to you for determining that. Um, not all towns exercise you know, authority over their roads, like state. So there may be uh, there may be instances where towns don't do that, and you have jurisdiction or authority or required to maintain those roads. Um, and so, to the extent that that is the case, that you have jurisdiction over those roads, um, I, these uh, restrictions should apply, right? You're having to pay to maintain them. Uh, you uh, you should be able to uh, either prevent those impacts or get compensated uh, for those. That said. Towns do have the authority to uh, regulate their uh, own roads. Um, uh, they are listed, you know, under many of the things, and in some circumstances, uh, uh, in some circumstances, uh, do uh, regulate those. The only other thing I'll say is, you know, I, obviously the county also has the is required to uh, maintain some state trunk highway roads. And uh, to that to that extent, a lot of the conditions that you could apply uh, apply on those may be subject to approval from DOT. But I, I think just generally, are they going to be absolutely applicable to every uh, town road? No, it would just have to be a question of whether or not you have jurisdiction 
over them. Thank you. We, as far as I know, we don't have jurisdiction over any county roads or the state highways. It would just be our county highways. So, uh, you know, the other thing, the only thing I'll say on that dynamic is that even if the town has jurisdiction over those, um, a county utilities road ordinance could provide a roadmap for towns um, to, you know, adopt their own ordinance. Uh, and uh, because a lot of the authority that I'm talking about, yes, I've said it in the context of highway, you know, county commissioners and, and the committee, but a lot of that authority also applies to cities, villages, and towns, although it differs uh, for each one and can get complicated. This is Clark. Um, so I've been in contact, I've been in contact with uh, both Enbridge and Excel. Uh, Rob, you probably don't know, but there's a big Excel project that's going to be going on through here in the next, uh, you know, three, four years. Yep. So Enbridge enters into road use agreements for in any municipality that they travel through, be that a county or a state or a uh, county. And so I think your points are well taken. And I think as we would review that, we already have the availability and the intent to enter into road or use agreements with both Excel and, and Ambridge. And uh, I think I just wanted, wanted to reiterate that they, you know, Excel basically has not got to the point of thinking about that yet. Whereas we have uh, talked to Ambridge about they're basically going to put in a road, they're gonna do the road scans. So they're gonna come in and then um, scan the roads and then there's a, you know, the, the pave rating and any uh, decompensation would be compensated for and paid to the county to do that. But in addition, they would enter into, um, you know, whether we're going to do uh, straight cuts, directional bores and those other issues. So yeah, so we're definitely going to, as we get to the Enbridge road use agreement, we definitely will be bringing in Corp Council um, to make sure that they review those, to make sure that we're appropriately compensated for our uh, for the use of those. Well, that and that's great, and I very much um, anticipated them. Have already been in discussions with the county. Of course, they they have been as far as purchasing uh, property and things like that as well. And and that's really great to hear because uh, you know some towns, uh, you know, the county may be thinking about this too. But I think it's a uh, yeah, I just think it's important to ensure that they're doing so. That's just great to hear. Do you recommend that the county also videotapes the, the roads and the crossings too? So that, you know, you have not just Enbridge's opinion? Yeah, well, uh, as Clark indicated, I, they're, they're using some sort of scanning software. I think that analyzes the integrity of the roads in a, in a way that would be different than just say videotaping them. Obviously visual inspection um, is a sure sign that there's been wear and tear uh, to a road. Uh, but you know, there can be impacts to the integrity of a road that aren't readily visible. And so I don't know if the county actually has uh, that capability to perform the same type of scanning. I do think it uh, would uh, provide a level of transparency, um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, but that's the thing, it's a cost there. And so it's a, a question of how a road use agreement would allocate that cost. If Enbridge would pay for the county to do it itself, maybe that's a good option, but um, that very much depends. I think Clark's got a good answer to that too. Yeah, so the um, it, this is the, the, you'll be using a third party scanning system. I, we've utilized these at cities. I've used this at other counties. Um, it's a pretty standard outfit. If they can pay for it, we don't want to pay for it. In addition, Rob, we do have a about a 70 page utility policy along with lots of different information on there. I have forwarded that to uh, my corp council. Uh, we will be reviewing that portion of it to see if we want to beef up certain things within that policy. In addition, the specific question I had for Corp Council uh, will be answering is, on, is our policy enforceable with the way, you know, what, what is the enforcement mechanisms of a policy? You know, and the question is, do we want to turn that policy we currently have, which is 80 pages long, into an ordinance in order to grant it a little bit heavier uh, enforcement capabilities from our side. So we are in the process of, re of reviewing this. Yeah, uh, the, so that 
I, I assume is just the utilities accommodation policy that's similar to kind of the, uh, to the longer Wisconsin counties uh, highways associations policy. And at least my understanding of, of the, the, the county highways association policy is that it only applies to um, right of way crossings, right? Any work done in the right of way itself and not necessarily to um, the transportation of, you know, vehicles over that. Um, I, I very much uh, think your point about whether or not that policy is enforceable um, is a good one um, and whether or not it should be incorporated through a through an ordinance. You know, back in 2018, of course, Ashland County adopted all of the uh, state statutes dealing uh, with uh, vehicles, chapters 341 through or 340, excuse me, through 48 and 50. And in a very much same way, you could just incorporate that and, and just provide um, yourself with more certainty that in case that right-of-way permit were violated in any way, you could actually uh, take action to have that violation cured. Um, and so I think that's extremely important and um, analyzing whether or not there's ways you can beef up that policy um, uh, for things that uh, may, not, uh, may not be outlined in it, right? And I think I've given uh, several examples on, on how to do that. The, the other point you made really great um, is that it sounds like it will be a third party, uh, third party doing it. Um, though this works in all sorts of, uh, you know, instances with government where Cambridge will pay for that to happen, but the actual, uh, the actual work is under the control of the county, right? And all of the, well, you know, while obviously Enbridge will have that information, um, it will all be given um, directly to the county and not filtered through Enbridge, for example. And so that's a great way to pro provide that transparency and to have them pay for it. Good. Martin, do you have a question? Yeah, I'm sure that. Okay. okay. Good. Any other questions? I so, would I would like to mention though that if 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 a county if the county adopts an ordinance, there should be some there should be some provision that towns towns can adopt it by reference or somehow not have to repeat the whole process. Right. 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 Good. Yeah, I think they would still have to go through um, the process of adopting an ordinance and posting it and doing all of those things. Absolutely. Um, could they just incorporate it by reference? Uh, Maybe, but I, I think the language, I think it would be difficult um, because the language a lot of times may be specific to a county's powers and the towns can just differ. I, I think the better thing would just be to use it as, as a baseline and a guide and then to adapt it, which would be a lot easier um, on a town, right, who may have much more limited resources. But I don't think they can just, you know, take it and then blanketly apply it to the town. That likely wouldn't work. Thank you. Yeah, Thank like, you. Like oh. he says, we'd have, if we did a policy, we would have it. They could rewrite it, you know, a little bit to suit their needs and then adopt that. But it would take a lot of the work out of it. Well, good. Yeah. That gave us a lot of good information. Thank you, Ralph. I hope it was helpful uh, and, and not too redundant or just reviewing stuff that you already know. Um, and I really appreciate the time this morning. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you. Nice to meet, uh, meet you virtually too, Clark. <laughs> I, I do have a copy of this PowerPoint. If you guys want it, we can email it out. Good. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you again. Okay. I'm going to sign off. You have a great day. You too. See you later. Thank you. I need a copy of that. Yeah, I do. He sent it to me this morning. Um, yeah, he did get it to me this morning, so I do have it on my email. I'm taking on that road use agreement that's uh, currently in place. Uh, Clark had indicated that they, they have a 70 page uh, policy. So we have a, it's about 79 page, 80 page uh, utility accommodation policy that was adopted by the Ashton County Highway Committee, this committee on November 8th of 2004. This policy looks to me, it, it basically was, was put out by WCHA, the County Highway Association. Mm -hmm. And, and we adopted it. What Clark is saying is, should we look at this policy, maybe make a few changes and bring it to the county board as an ordinance so it's 
has a little bit more weight and then just the policy through us it would be a full county yeah, ordinance. So it would be good to look at it and update it. Sure. Uh, question I'm uh, or, or I'm going with this uh, I'm not sure I've not seen it. Is there a few rate schedule in there? There is for so getting a um, I would think so. Yeah, it's it's pretty minor costs. If I can find it right here, but there is some some fee rates for getting the a permit, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, it looks like permit application and review fee is $35 and then if any inspections are $50 and there's a fee of 250 for open cut across the paved road away. Yeah, I'm thinking uh, a fee rate schedule of road usage because like say the uh, better tribe when the pipeline comes over and works on the day of class, you know, whether they're using a pickup of trailer or a 18 uh, wheeler in a trailer. You know, for the usage of the road, because what they have over in the reservation is our dirt roads. Sure. And uh, every, every time they leave, or it's a matter of putting another, uh, you know, rebuilding road to just about mm -hmm. at four to six inches of gravel. Sure. And, and, and they're scot free. Mm -hmm. So they, they've uh, added that. I'm not sure all our county roads are paved. They are. All of the county roads are paved. But then again, we're, we're taking the uh, what do you call it, um, the, the beating of, of the, the roads with the heavy equipment and, and the, you know, the trucks and trailers and low boys and the hauling the uh, excavators and whatever have you. Um, those sure. potholes are getting bigger. Yeah. And it's not even cheaper to repair them. No. no so. And, and that's, a, that's the reason I was bringing this town thing up is because towns don't have the resources to put this together. Sure. Unless the, unless the Towns Association has some boilerplate thing. Already they could, out. I do not know that, but I wouldn't be surprised if they have something that they could help them with to start with, for sure. <clears throat> I believe, and I haven't heard from the Town of Marengo, I heard the Town of Marengo might have adopted this policy that we have, oh, too. Okay. But. Um, th this is Clark. Um, I have to sign off to go to another meeting, but I think what I'll do is, um, even though we're not at that point yet, I will ask my contacts at Enbridge to send me their their sample or typical road agreements because obviously they they're in they're in like in a thousand colonies all over the nation, you know. So I'm sure they have a standard agreement, and we can start reviewing that to see is that something we can live with, or is this something that we want to uh, put money and energy into adopting into an ordinance format. So I will go ahead and, uh, and reach out to them and get that. And then uh, I have to sign off for another meeting. So thank you for uh, everybody attending. Thanks, Thanks Gordon. Gordon. Yeah. You know, I have a question now. Yes. If let's say we got some real wet weather, mm -hmm. we have the right to go ahead and close our road. As you've seen in there, the commissioner has a lot of latitude if there's road damage happening. But is that in our our policy now, or well, that's that state statute? Oh, that state statute. Yes. So we, if it was really wet, we could actually close the road. Yeah, there's there's a, there's a lot of the commissioner has a lot of power okay. through state statute on to take care of the roads. Yeah, I agree with Mike too. When they start hauling pipes on roads. Oh. These roads aren't built for that. Not a, no. when we're going to have truck after truck of heavy equipment and pipe traffic. So, just, especially with yes. the clay base, yeah. 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 we're going to pound some roads. Yeah. Sure. So, really, they're going to go through the town of Ashland, town of Marengo, town of Jingles, mm -hmm. uh, okay. city of Ashland, city of Mellon. Yeah. Not city of Ashland. It would be south of there, I believe. Be south of there? Yeah, they'd be just into Jingles. Okay. But it um, wouldn't be Mellon. Mellon. Probably, Probably Morse. Morse. They do have the airport. Oh yeah. yeah. But it makes it makes sense for them to have one consistent policy through the whole. And sure. Tom Morse more having one and Tom right. having one. You know. You're absolutely right. <laughs> now you're gonna put trucks with carrying pipes and their equipment. They're gonna take a toll on those tunnels more. If, you know, because the tunnels are even up to our specs. Oh, sure. So, you know, maybe we could invite. The towns, somebody from the towns, to come to a meeting when we talk about this again, so that they got some clue, you know, ahead of time what's going to be happening. Yeah, because they know what their roads are. Yeah, yeah. we did. We did send an invitation for this meeting to all the towns if they wanted to listen to this presentation. 
Um, we did have a chair here. Jack was maybe going to show up, but I see he didn't come but from the town of Ashland. Well, uh, it would be interesting to see this Enbridge agreement with other counties and towns and see what's mm -hmm. in there and what's not in there because we want to adapt it so we're protecting everybody that is the best we can. So. Sure. Good. Yeah, if we can boilerplate it so that it would be useful for right. us. Uh, okay. Tony H. Shoreline Riffraff. All right, Amber, do you want to pull up some pictures? So, as you know, we, we spent a lot of money on the island last year doing some riffraff projects that was getting close. The erosion was getting close into the roadway. Um, I was out there all oh, week, week and a half ago. I need to get out this spring and see how, how this helped. So, um, I took some pictures. They were they were in our packet, but then we're we'll have them up on color pictures on the screen. So as you can see, um, you know we got we got some. They're not large erosion. They're smaller pockets. You want to start flipping through them ever slowly. Okay. Um, just telling you. You know, just just behind them, um, different spots. We have like seven or eight spots that we did this varying in length. So would, would the solution then would be to put more rocks in those yes. rocks behind there? Yeah. So and it has to come in from the lake. Well, it doesn't have to, but the thing is, is, is you can see look, maybe look, see them slopes are, are nice and vegetated now. Yeah. If we go in from the roadside, <laughs> we're going to tear everything that we have up and just give it a better chance to erode again, you know, before it can, the grass can take hold and start going. So my thought is that we would be better off to come from the lakeside and, and, you know, shore that up a little bit. If we leave them spots, they're just going to keep growing. You know, they're relatively small right now. So my, my question to you is, is my thought is, is we should go out there and do some work. Um, you know, my budget, I'll have to, not exactly sure where we're going to be at. We were going to spend a lot of money on GG doing culverts. Does the committee think, what's your thought on, I might need to, to relocate some of the mass money down there to shore this up before, I, I don't know, it's just, it's, that's my thought. How much are you talking about? You, you know, I, I, I think... Um, a couple barge loads. The barge, barge load is like 80, 90 ton of rock. And, and we've done it before. We've contracted with Arnie Nelson Construction, Nelson Construction. We haul the rock to Bayfield. He picks it up on his dock in Bayfield, carries it out there with his barge, and then would have to place it with an excavator from the... Um, I'm thinking probably... You know, for his end, if I remember right, it was a, it was like three thousand a barge load. This was a couple of years ago. And that was just to haul it across. That wouldn't include the placing. So probably five to seven thousand for each barge load to take it across and place it. That's just without getting a cost for him. And, and place it. Yes, but and then we would have the cost internally of hauling it to Bayfield beforehand. So, I mean. I we're, think you got to do We're it probably talking, you know, thirty, forty thousand dollars total. If you let that go, it's going to be right between the yeah. rain and the rain, and it's only going to get worse. It ain't going to get worse. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I mean, we could haul it across and take ferry ride, and and place it from the backside. But then we we tear them slopes all up, right. and uh, you know, just give it a better chance of. I tell Arnie, give us a good deal. <laughs> okay. Are we, are we concerned about some kind of geo mac down? We we always put a fabric, a, a a heavy fabric behind the rip wrap, and I don't know some of the pictures if you can see it. Might be. I was thinking like a geo mac might, as opposed to a fabric. There. Yeah, the fabric is up. Yeah, I don't. I mean. <clears throat> Some of that you're seeing is the um, e map, the erosion map for that you see through. Um, you know that that 1,200 weight fabric for riprap. 
I, I think is the best option for behind there. And he places those rocks from the barge right onto the shore? You know, he said he would not be able to. He would have to have a excavator basically in the water oh. and, and pick them off the barge because uh, the water is too shallow to get with the machine on it to get right into it. Is that, would that be our excavator? That would be his is in that probably picture there at the very top left. Is that right so, there? is that bank you wrote it there? Or yeah, that that's what that looked like last year. But oh, the road okay. is getting away from there. So at this time we're not concerned with that area if the road is Quite that that's private property. And, oh. um, yeah, we're it's not not affecting us yet. It might someday, <laughs> but <laughs> well, so the consensus for Matt to get an estimate and figure out if it works. You'll have to work the numbers if it. Yeah. If those culverts. I mean, you have to swap them till next year. Yeah, that that's what I'm thinking. We might have to do one or two less culverts down there, and and, and put some more money up up toward here. To well, on on GG, is uh, there? You, you sorry, is there a chance that the the state would fix that? Those culverts are all in now. I don't think so. You never know. Well, no. I, I mean, if if a storm came through and washed them all out, maybe, <laughs> but not not this normal it's normal Tuesday. wear and tear. Or this Tuesday, Tuesday. Yeah, 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 Tuesday, Wednesday. Yeah. 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 The tropical yeah. storm is coming. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that must have been a hell of a storm because it washed out the roof over here up. Yeah, this little spot here. Yeah, there's some slides right here. Yeah, but this is a state authorized fix here, isn't it? Yeah, that would be their state maintenance. They should, they should fix it before that gets worse. They should, yeah. Okay. Yep. So on this, do you need a motion or just a draft? Ah, uh, yeah. I mean, it wouldn't hurt to have something just to tell me to that you agree with that we should Working put on the island put the funds piece. out to necessary to yeah. fix that. I'll, I'll make a motion then that we look into pricing on how much this uh, fixing would cost. Sure, I'm with that. Yeah, how much it would cost, and then okay, I'll second it. Okay. Any other questions? It'd be nice to uh, uh, try to locate a long reach excavator where you can reach out to. Yeah. I don't know if we have anything in here. <laughs> Uh, I know they're typical actually, they, they have limits, <clears throat> but they have the long arm, you know, long reach, and they get out there. And that would be ideal for this because uh, lifting these rocks is not over heavy for with the balance, yeah. but still it, it would get it to where it needs to be. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah, that is an idea. I mean, if we had a long reach, you could sit up on the edge of the road and, and reach the bulk of these, yes. But what that might be option to do for the county to do it Could themselves. Be. Yeah. How, how close can they get there? It looks like they uh, <laughs> I would say there everything is from fifty to hundred feet. That's a that's a pretty far but you might, you might have to kinda of walk them in there. Yeah, see and and that's what I was trying to avoid going down mm -hmm. on them slopes with any machinery. Stabilize them. I we seemed under last summer working on that. I was over a few times. Sure. Yeah. Okay, so there's a motion and a second to uh, go ahead and get a cost estimate uh, for the county eight shoreline riprap, and then if we need to, we'll take the money from the culverts on South GG property. Right? Yes. Yep. Everybody okay with that? All those in favor say aye. All right. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Thank you. County Eight Bridge Park. I have something I want to say about this. I am scared to death of our budget, and everybody in this room ought to be because I'm afraid our budget next year is going to just take a hit. The state is already looking at where they can cut money because they're short. So my question is: as great of an idea as this? Do we want to try and levy money before we even know where our budget's going? And is this something we would 
maybe wait until we see where our budget's going to be and then develop the policy because if Clark was still on here, I have no idea. I don't know if Dick even knows where this budget for next year is going to be because the state state's bleeding money. Mm -hmm. um, there's no revenue coming in. Every projection is that uh, they're already looking at where they're going to steal this money from one fund but put other places. Schools have been told to anticipate a huge decrease in state funding. So I'm not sure where we're going to get it unless we get enough federal dollars somehow out of the CARES package. So what I'm wondering is if we're talking about putting a levy on for this, we don't even know where our levy is going to be for everything else. So I like this idea. I just don't know where our budget is. I, I, I talked to a couple of the <coughs> boards because uh, I'm an assessor and we had our board of reviews and I kind of brought up about this bridge policy. And I know I was talking to Peaksville and Peaksville said, why should we have to pay for somebody else's bridges after we just fixed ours? You know, and, and if they're going to get levied like $5,000 a year to go into this bridge fund, and they got the, they only have two bridges and they got them both fixed and nobody helped them pay for it. And so, you know, I, th I think this could be very political uh, as far as who gets the money. And, you know, some of the just jingles doesn't even have a bridge. We well, have one and we tore it down. Yeah, but you know, they're not, they're not going to be in favor of having a bridge policy because they, you know, and if they're paying a certain percent every year and they're not getting nothing out of it and, you know, so I, I guess that's kind of, you know, sure. I, you know, I don't think that, I don't think most of the towns would like this. If if you need a bridge fixed, oh yeah, then you'd be in favor of it. But then is the committee going to go ahead and say, well, we don't want to fix that bridge on the point they got a lot of money, you know? Um, yeah, it could, it could be I very mean, political. It's not just bridges, though. You got to remember, it's culverts three feet and bigger, right? So. Most towns have a lot of culverts. I've been working with the towns trying to get culvert inventories. A couple have gotten back to me so far. I haven't. Some don't have them, and some do, and some are, are getting them to me. So I haven't. I didn't bring them today because I don't have all the information together yet. I what, did a, what's a big culvert like that cost? It depends um, how deep it is. I mean, you, you can go to a three foot culvert if, if it's a plastic. You can put in a plastic pipe for, oh, probably what, $40 a foot for the pipe. And then the installation, you know, depending on, you know, if it's 50 feet, you could probably say maybe in that $10,000 range. <clears throat> but as you go deeper and, you know, more, it can cost a lot more. And then it depends if it's, Does it's it asphalt surface. Does it we're putting them in? They do, we do some. But then the town reimburses the town. But it's still a better deal because the towns don't have that kind of equipment or man. Right. Yeah. So the county usually does that work. I wouldn't say usually. Sometimes. Some, sometimes, yes. Um, some towns hire private contractors to do it. Some towns, you know, town of Ashland, we do a lot of work for. Um, town of Agenda, we do some work for. Uh, oh, jingles. Jingles, we do quite a bit of work for, <laughs> yes. Um, you take. Some of the others, Jacobs, they do a lot themselves with they can. I don't know, bigger bigger projects, what they do, we haven't I'm, I'm done too much. But in a way to buy some time, because I am really concerned about a budget that we have no idea. But have we reached out to every town in the county and said, the committee's looking at a potential culvert replacement? We have we not. Should, maybe we should see, and then say to the town, would you support something like this? Sure. Then if we have those towns who say absolutely not, we mm -hmm. figure out how we do that. But like I say, my concern is last year, the tax levy in the county went up 18%. Don't let anybody try and fool you because that's what it was on the tax bills. We can't hit people with 18% again this year because sure. half the county isn't mm -hmm. even working. Well, it would be a greater increase than 18%. Well, <laughs> but that's what I'm saying. Yeah. So I would love to see because we're going to see our budget somewhere soon. I mean, not the final numbers, but we'll start to get a sense from, from Clark. Are they going to take money away or are we going to get enough in this quarter million dollar CARES Act to cover our shortfalls? Or, and 
But then you can ask the towns right now and say, would you be in favor of something like this? I, I understand where Peaksville is coming from. I think Peaksville's share for that bridge was over $100,000. Yeah, no, I understand that too. I mean, you know, you'd be a little bit of sour apples because they didn't get it. But putting in the next bridge of Shanna Golden. Right? Shanna Golden is doing Piper, Piper, Piper Road this year. this year, and that's their share is over 100000 Yeah, that's too. already this year. And, and that, that's basically why I brought this forward. Um, Shanna Golden had had budgeted, I think, uh, 70, 75,000 for Piper Road. The, the estimate came in about 30% higher than anticipated. So now they have to come up with another $30,000 this year to do this bridge. And so I just thought, you know, out, out of 72 counties, there's only like six to eight counties that do not already do this. You know, why, why are we not doing this? Should we look at it? And then maybe what we could do is when finance starts working on the budget, and they have a better feel, they could say, okay, if we budgeted whatever we need to budget for everything else, and highway comes in with this recommendation where we're going to raise the levy, 80, whatever that number was last month, could, could we sell it? It'd be, what What did I say? It was, was, I had that information it, that was, it was around $100,000. That's what we would try to raise. Right? Possibly, yeah. yeah. And $100,000. You know, if we have to pay half, you know, that would be maybe one bridge. <laughs> that's possible, yeah. No, one I mean, bridge and, and yeah. Then, see, that's the question you should ask the towns. If we had a policy where we had 100000 a year and a paper bridge, as an example, came along mm -hmm. and they got a bunch of that money, then the rest of the towns who are for it and can't get any money for a culvert, so then how do we divvy it up? Okay, Dick comes and says he lives in a place where they need a culvert, and I need a bridge. Who gets that? Yeah, right. it would be up to the committee, right? It would have to come to the committee, yeah. Right, and see, there'd be a lot of politics there. Because you say, well, La Pointe's got a lot of money. You know, they don't need, they don't need, <laughs> they don't need the culverts and stuff, and they don't need the bridges. Would we have to designate even the culverts? Would we have to okay that? Yeah. See, a lot of counties don't put a dollar amount on it. Some do, like Burnett County. I think they only have like thirty thousand a year. A lot of counties do not put a cap on it. So then it would be, it could be ten thousand this year, or it could be a hundred or two hundred, depending on what what comes in for what they're asking for. For the counties, is there any towns that need a bridge other than? So do they need one that's you know that they got are supposed to do it this year or next year? Uh no. I I put it in a packet here. Remember, can put that up that bridge, the county and town bridge list. Yeah. Um, it's not a very back of them. <laughs> so the sufficiency rating is the the next column over from the you know from the left to the right. Um, now, with the county, the county GG bridges is the county's responsibility. Yeah, I just I just put the county ones in here for, for reference. The county does not apply oh, okay. for this. No, do we no. automatically get one? <laughs> <laughs> so, so these numbers, when they get that sufficiency number gets below fifty, then it qualifies for federal funding for a replacement. And I believe it's either seventy or seventy-five. They could apply for rehab. You know. A new deck or fix it up. So you look through here. Um, Piper Road is at a 39, and that's getting done this year. Um, a lot of these numbers are, you know, pretty decent in the 90s, 80s, 80s. Um, we got one cutoff road, uh, Butternut Creek, is at a 74, and then oh. East Tyler Street, that's the city of Mellon, is at a 30, which the city does not qualify for this. Villages can opt to be in it, but cities cannot. Um, so in all reality, you look at the bridges, there's not a lot that's real close. You know, that we're looking at, you know, that's it. 
GG, that's 83. A lot of these are in the 90s yet. Um, is, is there any way that when we set this up, if, if we did, we could say that uh, a township has um, maybe, if, if we levy $100,000, uh, 1% goes into a, a fund and then the rest is for the culvert strictly for the township and can the, then the town can just use their culvert thing? Well, how, how I would like to see it is a lot like the LRIP program is set up. That we get a, every two years we get a chunk of money from the state. Say, let's just use 100,000 for example. And it gets divided into the counties on a spreadsheet, or into the towns, I'm sorry, by how many like road miles they've got or what their share is. And then the applications come in so, so if the town of Jingles hasn't spent any, got any applications or money, which they have got a lot through that, so they're low on the list, but hey, I'm just using them as an example. They would have first dibs into that money. If they put, a, they have to put an application in, but they would have first dibs and it, it, it does a, it ranks them in an end by dollar amount, how much their share would be. So each township, say we had 100,000, each township would be divvied up by their share by a formula we'd have to come up with by however, however, you know, whatever metric we use to, to do that. So when it, when this, when the applications come in, we would, we would look at this spreadsheet and say, you know, Peaksville is, is high on the list. Any of their money up to 50,000, would go to them first. If they don't take it, then it would go to the next one down the list and on down. And it's a it's a very equitable process on LRIP, and I think that same process would work very good here. But the committee still would have to approve it. This committee would have to approve it. Right now, through LRIP, it's a committee of usually the town chairman come in and, and they vote on it within themselves. They, you got to put an application and then the, the the town chairs come together and they vote who gets the money according to that spreadsheet. But this would come to this committee would vote on it who would get the funding. This, this so sufficiency number, that's determined by bridge inspection? Yes, it's it takes a, like a third party. It's a bridge inspection report. Yeah, it's a, it's a state has a website and you go in and you, you rate the bridge on all the different things about the bridge and, and condition states and, and it, they have their formula and it, it comes up with this number. Okay, but, well, yeah. I guess what I was asking is it's a, it's a third party yes. determination. Yes, yes, it's not us, yeah. You know, this uh, actually, this list is incomplete because what needs to be included on this list is three foot coldest and larger and how many of them are out there. Yeah, so that's what we've asked the towns for the towns some towns have that information some do not and some are working on getting it for me this this is a federal state database that i can pull this out of there's no database for culverts like that so okay if you have a database that you can pull this information from okay i got you yeah, we've asked some the information is available to us. Dorothy yeah. Dink has repeatedly <clears throat> asked towns to go out and GPS the location of the, each culvert they have in the town mm -hmm. and what's in there, size wise, length, yes. diameter. Because every time FEMA comes in, the FEMA wants to know what was there. Yeah. <laughs> Half the time the towns replaced it, yeah. and then they don't even know where half of them are. So a lot of towns have been being asked go out and GPS, not today, but when you're by it. GPS that location, what it is, get a get a database mm -hmm. of what's in your town. The DNR does require it also. They don't enforce that requirement, but very few towns have it. I mean, and and for us to it's gonna take a while to compile it. Peaksville dropped me off a file folder and it's just it's all written on note paper. They have the information, but it's it's not that easy to use. <laughs> I mean, postpone making a decision on that. So yeah, we're after the first of the year, and then it, it's that's totally up to you guys. I'm just just bringing it out if it's something we're we're interested in doing. And trying to in October, get a little bit more updated. Sure, and we could 
ask the towns too, do they support a program like this? Mm -hmm. And the only timelines that could be, you know, in the policy, tentative policy I would have for it, they would have to apply for this before November for next year. So that way I would have a chance to get out before the snow flies and look at it to bring it to, to this committee, you know, like in November to, to start. So, and then, and then they need a little bit of time. So they have their half budgeted also for the next year. So if, if we want to do it to be money available next year, we would have to do something, you know, by September at the latest. If, if you're not comfortable with that and you want to make it, we would have another year to, to work on this and think about it. I think finance will have somewhat of an idea where our budget's headed. That's the big concern right now. Sure. Normally in August, we kind of start you know, budget talking. But the clerk at the department head meeting started last week, brought it up, and that it's it's probably going to be coming soon with by July that they're going to start looking for tentative stuff numbers. From the departments. And one so thing. do we want a motion to table this till September? I don't think we need a motion. I had it just on here as a discussion discussion, discussion. Yeah. discussion item. So we'll just, yeah. I, I just put on my sheet here incomplete information. We need the culvert information to Yeah, and and we are working on like I say, I've got a couple towns back. Um I I haven't got them all back okay. yet, and then we will need to somehow compile some of that information also. Some okay. of them aren't going to do it now. Like I've heard back from a couple, and they're going to yeah. try to go out and do it now. So this is Ringo good. Is... Anyways, even if it doesn't go through, we're kind of prompting them to do That's it. Right. So, right. <laughs> um, right. but one thing you and I had talked about, like, um, is trying to maybe not do November first, was maybe doing it earlier. Yeah, like I suggested because like when we're doing our budget, and if we're going to get hired to do the work. We can, not, I mean, yeah. by November, it's getting passed, so it's sure. much easier. To and it would be time. better for the towns even to know because they finalize their budgets in their November meetings. Yeah. Right. So and then they know what they're getting it, and then we're doing yeah. work. Well, the township is going to have an election again in April. Mm -hmm. You know, so I, you know, I'd be dealing with a whole bunch of different people even, which happens the same thing with the county. But it's possible they might find somebody new to run, but. <laughs> well, well, people die. <laughs> There's still a few months in the next year, though. <laughs> yeah, they do, they do die. Sorry. <laughs> um, okay, update on the revised non metallic mine reclamation order. So, I just wanted that we had talked about this last meeting, um, changing that financial assurance. I did put together something and, and give it to Clark, and, and he in turn gave it over to Max. Uh, we have not, I have not seen anything back from Max on that at this time. So just wanted to let you know, we are working on it. Um, see what Max comes up with on thoughts of what we put together and, and, uh, we'd like to get, get something taken care of with this as soon as possible. I don't know if you realize this, we did talk about it at the executive committee meeting. We talked about, uh, uh, we use culverts and stuff, putting them into a non-lapsing yes. fund. And I guess yep. the committee was in favor of that, right, Gary? Yeah. The executive committee was. And I guess that's going to go before the county board. Okay. As far as I know. Yeah. But we, we did pass that executive committee. Sure. That's good. Okay. Two things on item seven. First, we'll do the next meeting date. And then I have a question about items. But next meeting date is tentative. Well, so the tentative date would be July 3rd, 13th. Excuse me. Um, I am planning on taking a couple weeks off in July. Um, I'm coming back for the meeting. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, well we, can, we can move it to whatever. So I, I, the 13th wouldn't really work for me. I wouldn't be a, 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 a able to put together an agenda for, for that. I'm, I am going to be taking some vacation here a week in the next week or so to, I'm going to be building the garage and then then we're going to go on a little jaunt toward the Yellowstone and stuff here and, and right around the fourth so so what you want to do it later in the month um the next Monday would work the 20th would work for me does that work for everybody else 20th I think I'll be good but just don't know <laughs> okay well everybody's looking at that 
Um, here's a question I'd like to put on the next agenda to talk about. ATV, open county, some county roads for ATV is a continuing thing that comes up every year. This committee is the one who makes the decision. County and out of Glidden has been a hot topic for months now. Uh, the rec officer says it's, it's something that should be done. But rather than talk about County N, and then a month from now, somebody's going to come in and ask about County C, and a month after that, they're going to come and ask for another. There are certain roads, and Matt and I talked briefly before about it. GG, County GG between Clam Lake and Mellon, that should never get over. That is the worst road in the history of the world for traffic. It's all curves, it's flying corners, it's terrible. So I think that not a lot of civil. But does the committee want to talk about potentially opening up for ATV use county roads? And do we want to talk about a specific one like County and in Clinton, which has been a huge topic? Or do we want to tackle a couple of them? Now, Iron County has all the county roads open. Price County has all their county roads open after a couple of years. Iron County's only been up maybe a year at most, maybe not that long. But anyway, does the committee want to fight this battle road by road? Or do we want to say to Matt to could we open County N and County C or County F in general? Or do we want to be specific and take them one at a time? County N goes from from Glidden out to the Iron County line. It's not quite, it stops, it turns it's, into gravel. That's right. Um, and we wouldn't, we would give permission to open a county road like we did on County F is open from Elmwood and Agenda to the Iron County line. GG South is only about eight tenths of a mile. That was a federal problem. That's open. But, uh, the clubs would have to come to this committee because the clubs have to pay for all the signage and up and follow the guidelines which the county would oversee and say we've done it correctly or not. But the county wouldn't pay for signage. Or the clubs would have to come. But I guess the question is if we put it on an agenda, do we want to talk about one road? One road. At a time. Okay, that's fine. Um the only thing is, I think that all the towns should be invited to some meeting and have it once a year. And if they have any requests, then they submit their request at this one meeting. And that would be the only time during the year that we take new requests, you know, that they just do it once a year. And then from that point on, we could look into that road. But so then we don't have somebody coming in every month, you know, saying, Oh yeah, we want to open this up because you opened that one up. Or would would you be talking about a process where the town is involved? In other in other words, the town would would screen the, the request. I'm there thinking that the clubs should go to the township, right? And the township should come to here yeah. and put the but the, the, maybe the townships need to know that this is the policy we have, and okay, this is how you go about it. Um, so, so maybe, maybe the, what we should do is is just have a discussion next month on the current ATV policy and look at revisions, right? Yeah, of of how how you want to handle it. Like you see, even if we were to make a decision saying we want to open up a county road, the ATV clubs would have to come and talk to us because mm -hmm. they're the ones responsible for paying for the signage and fighting by the rules and the rec officer has been involved in it. I pick on County M a lot because every time I go to Jacobs or Pittsville, the people are being ticked, which I keep trying to tell them it's not open, you shouldn't be on it, but in all reality, M would not be a big deal uh, in some other area in your opinion. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I'm also looking at, I'll tell you what, if you go to Clam Lake any weekend, you see the freaking four wheel of traffic and the business that that little town does, it's huge for, in Clam Lake, I'm not sure. And now I understand County M is open. We, we opened a section of that okay. a year ago. Right. Yeah. So, and, yeah. Yeah. 
and and so like I say, if you're trying to get money, if you go by my place on a weekend and it's just nothing but four wheelers going by. I mean on trailers and so going sure. yeah. So last okay. last year we turned down we turned down a road by Clan Lake. Yeah. GG North. G -G. Yeah. yeah. yeah that was there. right by Clan Lake. But then we gave we granted one. And yeah. Yeah. So you know, but I, I think uh, Rick has the right idea that each case should be sure one at a time. One at a time but I'm just saying the application needs if, if we're going to discuss it this year, they should come to a certain meeting and do it once. And then if, if we got six of them to look at, then we can take them from there. Sure. I, I, yeah. I, I like that idea. I do think that having the town's blessing would be a big right. factor. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And we would send a notice out saying next month we're going to talk about county roads. Mm -hmm. if, if your county road is sure. in your township or two townships, they should all get in. It's be a long meeting. Well, I don't, so, but that's okay. So for the agenda next month, do you agree that we should look at the ATV policy to make any possible revisions? Right. That would be an agenda item. Yeah. Okay. And you're saying the 20th of July is when you want to meet? Right. Yes. Well, we wouldn't invite the towns to that meeting. We just no. look at the policy first. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we could have a meeting and then no garage. Okay. Yeah. Just social distancing. Well, <laughs> <laughs> enough to get a decent social distance. <laughs> any other any other items for an agenda? Yeah, and if something comes up between now and next meeting, and we think we need to talk to it, call oh, yeah. staff here. Yep. So that they could get it on the agenda. Yeah, please, please. We we try to get an agenda about a week before. Um, so if anybody has something they want on our agenda, if you can get a week before the meeting to me and, uh, that would be great. I will keep, I will keep that, uh, County bridge aid policy on there just for discussion yet. Um, as we get information from the towns and, and, and keep moving forward on that. One thing Amber had a question on is, do you guys want to have us keep sending packets in the mail like we did this time or just email or how how what do you guys mind email as long as they come at least a couple of days before i usually send it out on tuesday right. like i mail them out tuesdays yeah. and email them out tuesday if something happens like you know payroll and whatever the latest is wednesday um <clears throat> for me email is fine okay and then well, i can and then would you print it out or would you want me to provide you with the print out in the next week i can I think they're not enough for everyone, but yeah, just if I don't need hundred pages, I don't want to print it. Nope. Exactly. Like I mean it's kind of a big packet, yeah. so I can print out for the ones that I email if you guys choose to. And then yeah. but if you want the mail packet, you know, just let me know. Let's just go I'll around the you. room. I mean, Rick, how would you uh, how, how much does it cost to send these out? Can't um that much. Three, dollar three, fifty three, dollar three, forty three something. Yeah. And stamps. Okay. Email it. Are you getting your emails? No, mail it. You want to mail it? Yeah. Yes, mail it to me. Yeah. How would you yeah. like it? Mail. Yeah. All right. Marty. I would be. I would be okay with getting it emailed. Okay. okay. But if we could have to say the the mailing cards, we could have a packet. For you here. Yep. For you here. Sure. Yeah. That okay. would be for me. Would be working out. Okay. Like mail. Mail. Okay. I guess mail. Okay. All right. That's, we just, just wanted to ask. So I will email and then give you a packet on the meeting day. Okay. And if you, you know, if I email it to you and then you just say, hey, can you email it to me? Just email me back and I'll get one in the mail. If, if we could have both, is that possible? We'll yes. send emails. I will still okay. email. Yeah. But I don't think you emailed this, did you? Yep. Yeah. Oh, I, uh, are, so that's the question. Can you check that? Is any is everybody getting the email package? I don't think you have an email yet, right? No. Okay. So I didn't send to you, but I sent to the rest of you. You got yours? And you're talking you're talking about the county email. The county yes, email. Right, right. I was told I can only send to the county email, but yeah, that's, that's what I was told. All right. Yeah, yeah, that that works. Works. Yeah. 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 All right. Thanks for coming. Thanks, Dick. Give you an hour. The trouble I have during the trouble I have is my printer's my like a 1947 <laughs> Studebaker. I'll second it. <laughs> Hold on a second.
Third motion, leave and second to adjourn. All those in favor say aye. 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 A